I was just released from the county jail here uh, along with about, I don't know, 50 other people uh, who were mostly charged with trespassing for simply asserting our democratic rights, our constitutional rights, for holding a protest, uh, for exercising our right to freedom of speech, and we were all arrested basically for this uh, encampment to uh, stop the genocide and to exercise our rights of democracy. And I was, um, we just went there in support and we were asked to please participate. So we were there uh, in, the, in the line defending the encampment and the cops came at us with bicycles and basically assaulted us with bicycles uh, repeatedly pushed us over and then at one point they came us uh, at us with the bikes and one of the officers picked up my my uh, right foot and tried to dump me back on my head and I was charged with assault I was charged with assault so this is the crazy world that we live in right now uh, a world where fascism is here it's not something that's coming it's here right now with the police forces that are being trained by the uh, Israeli occupation forces in part you know in these horrific and draconian uh, tactics are being used against uh, peaceful demonstrators the riot police are being sent in to create a riot so earlier in the day we had been at a wonderful uh, educational event at the public library along with many other activists and across the political spectrum and this included Omali Yashatela and the Uhuru uh, telling the story of their being set up and framed and basically prosecuted as uh, you know Russian assets essentially and criminalized and facing very serious charges uh, their case will be heard in later in May and you know encourage people to turn out for it and support you know, and it's ironic because I myself was uh, investigated for three years by the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, for very similar charges, which were investigated for three years. They couldn't find anything. So I was basically, you know, uh, exonerated. But the charge is still out there. You know, the press pays no attention to that. And I know what it's like to be charged as a criminal for your basic political beliefs that you've held, you know, for all of your life and for which you don't need Russians to uh, instruct you well, what to do. You know, these are essentially, you know, things that um, American activists know and see. And Omali himself has been such a, you know, incredible educator and um, uh, advocate to end colonialism, to end this failing empire, which is now, you know, I mean, for a long time it has come back to bite us. But now that's happening more broadly. I think it was more focused on the African-American community, but now that kind of oppression and that violence is also hitting home right here uh, in our colleges. So we have a big fight ahead. We have a big fight for democracy. We have a big fight to stop the normalizing of the torture and murder of children on an industrial scale. What happens in Gaza is the tip of the iceberg of this kind of really global abuse by U.S. empire, as Martin Luther King said a long time ago, my country is the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. That is still true. And, you know, in the same way Martin Luther King said that uh, militarism, uh, imperialism, and uh, extreme materialism, uh, or aka capitalism, these are all joined at the hip. This is the triple evil. And colonialism is a part of that. And that's kind of Omali's message. And we're experiencing that. Uh, you know, all of us are being colonized now uh, and abused by the empire. So times are changing. And um, no matter uh, what the empire does to double down right now, people are rising up. And there's enormous momentum uh, for change. People by huge numbers. Uh, the uh, primary in New York State three weeks ago, the Democratic primary had a 12% uncommitted but an 83% no-show. 
relative to 2020, which was the same thing where the uh, election had already been decided. So it's not like, oh, this is a decided election. No, it was decided back in 2020 as well. So the floor has fallen out from the political system as it currently exists, and people are clamoring for other choices with integrity that are accountable to uh, everyday people, to working people, uh, to students, to young people, to communities of color, to all those who are really being uh, marginalized and abused and put at risk right now. So, you know, in gratitude to all those who are struggling of this genocide and greatly appreciate the role of Uhuru and uh, Omali Yashatila in the struggle. Thank you all so much.